for worship this morning uh, please take note that our service our worship service takes the form of matins and mass matins and mass we have our sister uh, Sonia who will lead us in the first half of the worship in this service of matins and then we will follow that with the mass the celebration of the sacrament We'll now have our opening prayer. The Lord be with you. The Lord be with you. Your love, O oh Lord, is boundless. We who are strangers have been made your children. We who are defenseless have been brought into your household. Keep us mindful of your deeds of mercy, that we may love you with our whole heart and love our neighbor as ourselves. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Hymn number 
and saving power. Through your Spirit, may we ever rejoice in the abiding presence of our risen and ascended Lord. Amen. The Jubilate on page 37. Yeah, yeah. Oh, shout to the Lord in triumph all the earth. Serve the Lord with gladness and come before his face with songs of joy. Know that the Lord, he is God. It is he who has made us, and we are his. We are his people, and the sheep of his pasture. Come into his gates with thanksgiving, and into his courts with praise. Give thanks to him, and bless his holy name. For the Lord is good, 
His loving mercy is forever. His faithfulness throughout all generations. The Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Lord, we pray to you for the forgiveness of our sins. Have mercy upon us, most merciful Father. In your compassion, forgive us our sins, known and unknown, things done and left undone. And so uphold us by your Spirit, that we may live and serve you. In the honor and glory of your name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. We now have or Psalm, Psalm 90, Psalm 90, verses 1 to 6 and 13 to 17. You may be seated, please. Psalm 90, verses 1 to 6 and 13 to 17. That's on page 587, page 587. Lord, you have been our refuge from one generation to another. You turn us back to the dust and say, Go back, child of earth. You sweep us away like a dream. We fade away suddenly like the grass. Return, O Lord, how long will you tarry? Be gracious to your servants. Make us glad by the measure of the days that you afflicted us and the years in which we suffered adversity. May the graciousness of the Lord our God be upon us Prosper the work of our hands. Prosper our handiwork. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. Amen. Please sit. We now have the first reading of the ministry of the word. from the book of Deuteronomy, Deuteronomy, chapter 34, beginning at verse 1 to the end. Moses went up from the plains of Moab to Mount Nebo, to the top of Pigas, 
which is opposite Jericho. And the Lord showed him the whole land. Gilead as far as Dan, all Nephilim, the land of Ephraim and Manasseh, all the land of Judah as far as the western sea, the Nijib and the plain, that is, the valley of Jericho, the city of the palm trees, as far as so. The Lord said to him, This is the land which I swore to Abraham, to Isaac, and Jacob, saying, I will give it to your descendants. I have let you see it with your eyes, but you shall not cross over there. Then Moses, the servant of the Lord, died there in the land of Moab at the Lord's command. He was buried in the valley of the land of Moab, opposite Bethel, but no one knows his burial place to this day. Moses was 120 years old when he died. His sight was unimpaired, and his vigor had not abated. The Israelites wept for Moses in the plains of Moab 30 days. Then the period of mourning for Moses was ended. Joshua, son of Nun, was full of the spirit of wisdom because Moses had laid his hands on him. And the Israelites obeyed him, doing as the Lord had commanded Moses. Never since has there arisen a prophet in Israel like Moses, whom the Lord knew face to face. He was unequal for all the signs and wonders that the Lord sent him to perform in the land of Egypt against Pharaoh and all his servants and his entire land, and for all the mighty deeds and all the terrifying displays of power that Moses performed in the sight of all Israel. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The hymn. Hymn number 239.
Blessed are you, Lord, God, the God of Israel. You have come to your people and set them free. You have raised up for us a mighty Savior, one of the house of your servant David. Through your proud prophets, you promised of old to save us from our enemies, from the hands of all that hate us, to show mercy to our forebears, and to remember your holy covenant. This was the oath you saw of to set us free from the hands of our enemies, free to worship you without fear, holy and righteous before you all the days of our life. And you, child, shall be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare the way to give God's people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of their sins. In the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us to shine upon those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. We'll have a second reading. be to God. Now we turn to page 52, common prayer, and we will read Jesus' Savior. to us in your mercy. We look to you to save and help us. By your cross and your life laid down, you set your people free. We look to you to save and help us. 
When they were ready to perish, you saved your disciples. We look to you to come to our help. In the greatness of your mercy, loose us from our chains. Forgive the sins of all your people. Make yourself known as our Savior and mighty deliverer. Save and help us that we may praise you. Come now and dwell with us, Lord Christ Jesus. Hear our prayer and be with us always. And when you come in your glory, Make us to be one with you and to share the life of your kingdom. The Lord be with you. And also with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew, the 22nd chapter, beginning at the 34th verse. Glory to Christ. Our Savior. When the Pharisees heard that Jesus had silenced the Sadducees, they gathered together, and one of them, a lawyer, asked him a question to test him. Teacher, which commandment in the law is the greatest? He said to him, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul, and with all your mind. This is the greatest and first commandment. And a second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Now, while the Pharisees were gathered together, Jesus asked them this question. What do you think of the Messiah? Whose son is he? They said to him, the son of David. He said to them, how is it then that David by the spirit calls him Lord, saying, the Lord said to my Lord, sit at my right hand until I put your enemies under your feet. If David calls him Lord, how can he be his son? No one was able to give him an answer, nor from that day did anyone dare to ask him any more questions. The Gospel of Christ. Let us pray. In the name of the living God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Come Holy Spirit and make us holy, giving us thoughts that lead to prayer, prayer that leads to love, and love that leads to life in you forever. Amen. Please be seated. So the Pharisees and Jesus are at it again. Questions, questions, tests and tests. And this morning, the, the question about the greatest commandment, and we, uh, our attention is once again drawn back to Jesus' uh, favorite word or topic, aside from the kingdom of God, but love. Greatest command is to love God. And he adds a second. He says, a second is like it. To love our neighbor as ourselves. And so, Jesus makes this very intimate connection between loving God and loving each other. We cannot claim to love God and not love our brothers and sisters whom we see every day. It is inevitable, as it were, if we are people who love God. And what Jesus says, his response, and when we reflect on it, 
when we really try to internalize that understanding in a real sense it is the understanding that buttresses or we can say it is what sacramental theology is built upon the Eucharist baptism marriage confirmation you know the sacraments the sacraments are founded upon that basic principle of love now, not just any love divine love understood in the sense that God God is present God's love is present in his creation and that understanding is further reinforced as it were when the scripture speaks to us about human beings being created in the image of God so to love God and to mistreat God's creation whether it is um, fellow human beings the environment or what have you to love God and to mistreat God's creation is a contradiction that cannot be reconciled to love God the natural outcome or the outworking of that is to love God's creation so you know that every Christian is an environmentalist and we say it in the creed all the time I believe in God the Father Almighty creator so every Christian is an environmentalist so Christians should never be accused of destroying the environment messing up the environment leaving water bottles in church and all those kind of things we don't do that Christians are environmentalists. We take care of the creation. We take care of each other. So we can see how that is played out. And that's why sacramental theology is important to us. Because it's a way of saying that in the ordinary, everyday things of life, we must learn to see and appreciate how God is present and how God is working. So we talk about bread becoming the body of Christ, wine the blood of Christ um, in, in, in marriage we have rings um, the rings have no beginning or end as it were and so they are meant to uh, symbolize that love of God that divine love without end it just keeps going and going and going you know and in all of the sacraments they bring out that physical or tangible aspect that point to a deeper spiritual reality and that is why sacramental theology is important not only important necessary and unavoidable God is present in his creation so to love God means that we must love each other the challenge therefore comes in many different ways and one which we will talk about in a little while from now how loving persons even when we have to be a little bit uncomfortable how important that is because love is not always smooth sailing and so um, something for some reason I can't remember but a book I was reading recently and the writer made the point my new mantra and he says love is not a feeling Love is a choice. I felt like I knew that long time, but for some reason it really struck me. Love is not a feeling. Well, I've always kind of disregarded that. Love is not a feeling. Love is a choice. Think about that. Let that, you know, settle for a little bit. Love is a choice. Feelings come and go feelings come and go we don't feel the same every day we don't feel the same every Sunday we come to worship some Sundays we don't even want to come out of our beds but we do why we have made a choice choice to do 
what God would have us do. It's not just a choice to do anything, anything that we want or that makes us feel good. Love is a choice. And it's a choice we make for God even when that choice may make us somewhat uncomfortable. But we persevere with it because it is a choice. And it's a choice made upon knowledge that we have of God and His Word. Knowledge that in some cases we have based upon experience. We may have been down this road before. And we see, we have seen, we have experienced what the other outcomes can be like. So when we think of love as a choice, we therefore have to think of love then as a way of life and an attitude that we take on. We do not limit it or restrict it to feelings because feelings are very much like the wind. Something may blow soft, something may blow hard, something may don't blow at all. That's feelings. But when we choose God, we choose love. And when we choose love, we choose a lifestyle of love, an attitude of love. So that when other feelings come to us that would want to suggest we do otherwise, we refuse, we resist, because we have made a choice to do what God wants us to do. Love is a choice. If you want to take it on the romantic level, you hear people talk about falling in love, but fall in love, but well, why is there a but? There's a but because a choice has to be made or choices have to be made. Because we recognize how much that falling in love is wrapped up and covered and embedded and root rooted in all sorts of feelings. And we have to sift through all of these feelings to find a rock hard foundation to give us that level of comfort and assurance to choose that risk because falling in love is risky business we don't like to think of it in that way but when problems come later on we begin to think differently. But not just falling in love, relationships and life as a whole. Being involved with others at a whatever level. It's always about taking a risk. But we take that risk, having made the choice that we will choose God and God's love as our guiding light. And once that initial choice is made and properly put into context, everything else follows and flows from that. So this morning, I ask us to consider again this wonderful word that is used so easily. How do we understand it? How do we see it? How do we feel about it? Love Loving is a conscious choice we are called to make every day. And my strong recommendation and suggestion to all of us is that we make that choice first and foremost by choosing God's love. Love God with all your heart, with all in your soul and with all your mind. You will find it easier to love your sisters and brothers. 
easier to choose to choose love and to choose God's path in spite of and despite of Amen Now on page 42, I will recite the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father, the Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. We now have our intercession. We now have our intercessory prayers for G, page 118. Brothers and sisters, I ask your prayers for God's people throughout the world, for our bishop, for this gathering, and for all ministers and people. Pray for the church. Brothers and sisters, I ask your prayers for peace, for goodwill among and within nations, and for the well-being of all people. Pray for justice and peace. Brothers and sisters, I ask your prayers for the poor, the sick, the hungry, the oppressed, and those in prison and for the victims of crime and violence. Pray for those in any need or trouble. Brothers and sisters, I ask your prayers for all who seek God or a deeper knowledge of him. Pray that they may find and be found by him. Brothers and sisters, I ask for your prayers for the departed, especially Edwin, who died this week, and Edith, who died three years ago. Pray for those who died. Brothers and sisters, I ask your prayers for our country as we take the bold but necessary step to reopen our borders next weekend. Help us to on one hand prepare to welcome any visitors and on the other hand to prepare for the inevitable return of COVID-19 to our shores. Brothers and sisters, I ask your thanksgiving for all frontline workers, for those who work in immigration and customs, the police, domestic staff, sanitation workers, nurses and doctors.
for their commitment, for their professionalism, for their preparedness and protection. Brothers and sisters, praise God for those in every generation in whom Christ has been honored. Pray that we may have grace to glorify Christ in our own day. Let us now turn to page 122, page 122. In our prayers, let us remember to lift up the parishes of St. James and St. Thomas in Nevis. We pray for uh, Dean Emeritus Rudolph Smithen. We also ask to remember St. Paul's Nevis, Father Christopher Archibald, and all the people of those three parishes. Lord, in your mercy. On page 122, we pray together the first prayer. The first prayer. Page 122. Together. Lord, hear the prayers of your people and what we have asked faithfully. Grant that we may obtain effectually to the glory of your name through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Page 125, page 125, the greeting of peace. The kingdom of God is justice, peace, and joy, inspired by the Holy Spirit. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Let us share the peace of Christ. Now we'll have the offer to
We now turn to page 126, page 126. As we make our offering, let us remember in a special way um, to offer up to Almighty God. As we have been remembering this month as the month of the elderly, we pray for all of our elderly members. And we let us also remember to lift up all the persons who suffer and fight against the dreaded disease of cancer. Remember especially our women fighting against breast cancer. We pray for all of our doctors and researchers as they continue to seek to find new ways to fight and to treat this dreaded disease. For all who have died, we pray Almighty God to have mercy on their souls and for all of the family members and friends who mourn and grieve their death, we pray Almighty God to grant them peace and comfort in their hearts and minds. Lord, in your mercy, let us know our, our offertory prayer, prayer B. Father, we offer you these gifts which you have given us. This bread, this wine, this money. With them, we offer ourselves, our lives, and our work to become, through your Holy Spirit, a reasonable, holy, and lively sacrifice as this bread and wine become the body and blood of Christ. So may we and all your people become channels of your love through the same Christ, our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Father Almighty, everlasting God. Page 131 of God the Holy Spirit. For by water and the Holy Spirit, you have made us a new people in Jesus Christ our Lord, to show forth your glory in all the world. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Let us sit reverently or kneel. Page 137. Page 137. We give thanks to you, Lord our God, for the goodness and love you have made known to us in creation, in calling Israel to be your people, in your words spoken through the prophets, and above all, in the word made flesh, Jesus, your son. For in these last days, you sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the savior and redeemer of the world. In him, you have delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before you. In him, you have brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. For on the night that he was betrayed, he took bread, and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take this and eat it. This is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me.
And after supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, Father, according to his command, we remember his death, we proclaim his resurrection, we await his coming in glory, and we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, Lord of all, presenting, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your Son in his sacrifice, that we, made acceptable to him, may be sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, reconcile all things in Christ, and make them new and bring us to that city of light where you dwell with all your sons and daughters through Jesus Christ our Lord the firstborn of all creation the head of the church and the author of our salvation by whom and with whom and in whom in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory are yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. On page 144, 144, as our Savior has taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. The gifts of God for the people of God. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sin of the world. Lord, I'm not worthy. Lord, I'm not worthy. Lord, I'm not worthy that thou shouldst come under my roof, but speak the word only and my soul shall be healed. Amen. Lord God, hear the prayers of your people who call upon you. Be merciful to us and bless us, O God. Regard not our sins, but remember your love for us. Amen.
for the administration of the sacraments, we sing the communion hymns as printed, 593, 260, and 446. Uh, please, um, as usual, please follow the directions of the ushers. Body of Christ, you can feel.
We turn now to our prayer books, page 126, page 126. As we give thanks to Almighty God for his presence and gift to us of Jesus in the Blessed Sacrament, let us also remember uh, to lift up our sister's uh, Hyacinth Katie, who was in hospital but is now out, and also uh, Aretha Hanley, who's currently in hospital. Pray God's blessings upon them both. Pray that his hand of healing and deliverance will help to restore their health. Lord, in your mercy. On page 148, we pray together the second prayer. The second prayer. <clears throat> Eternal God and Heavenly Father, we thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you and all persons in you with gladness and singleness of heart through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Shall we bow our heads? May God bless us all with a loving sense of his near presence to guide us, to protect and help us, and may we know what it is to walk close with him all our life long. And now we pray the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Uh, words of welcome once again to all of you to this act of worship. Do we have any first time worshippers with us uh, this morning? Any first time worshippers? No? Okay. Uh, lovely to see us here. Uh, do we have any persons celebrating uh, birthdays or anniversaries of any form? We've got three young men, one lady, one young lady. Yes, 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 yes. I stand corrected. Okay, so let, let us pray. Loving God and Father, we thank you for these, your children. We thank you, Lord, for their lives. We thank you for the health and strength that you have blessed them with. And as they are able to celebrate another year of life, we pray, dear God, that you would truly show yourself to them and help them to know, especially our little brothers, help them to know even now that God is with them, God loves them, that they are not alone. And as they learn to understand and appreciate your presence in their lives, may they go, Lord, with a conviction to love you more, to serve you more. And so, Lord, we place all of them in your hands this day, thanking you for their lives and asking you, Lord, to multiply their joy. Bless their homes, bless their loved ones, and all who are close to them, that together they would help to multiply that joy. We ask, O oh God, that you would take them on, take them onwards. Bless them with many more years to come. And as the years roll on, may they see themselves drawing closer and closer and closer unto you. These mercies we pray and ask in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Okay, can we sing... Um, Listen to the birthday song for a little while. It's really a birthday song. Yeah. <laughs> 
birthday song. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, happy birthday. Happy birthday to you. May the good Lord bless you. From Nathan 10 as well. Okay, when is your birthday? Today? Okay, when is your birthday? Thursday. Okay, great. Here we give them a hand. Okay, so our two little brothers are celebrating their 10th birthday, both of them. So we wish them endless celebrations, which will eventually end, but enjoy. Okay, God bless you. Okay, and best wishes to you both, of course. Okay. Uh, we have our notices. Um, just before our notices, um, Brother um, Eloy will give us the notices. Uh, <clears throat> from our first service um, this morning, uh, like I said to you, um, doing a bit of an experiment, uh, we had a bit of a discussion at that first service, and um, the thinking is, well, those who attended, mostly from the St. Barnabas congregation, uh, they would love to have that service continue. And we're looking at a start time of 6. Instead of 6.30, we start at 6. Um, but I think in the best interest of health, considering the situation we're in, that we leave this second service at 8.30 to ensure that we have enough time, you know, transitioning. So, um, I wanted to share that with you, and uh, if there are any thoughts or, or, or ideas uh, that you would like to share, we can do that um, uh, quickly, nicely, lovingly, um, but that, that was, that's the thinking um, from the coming out of the first service uh, this morning, which I actually think is quite nice. I, I love doing early services. I wish we could do 5 o'clock and 7 o'clock, you know, and we just get home. Um, so, um, for um, some time going into next year, we, we don't know how long we're going to be in this situation for, but it means that we would have our usual 8 o'clock service would now become 8.30 instead.